Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, the podcast for the narrative lectionary with me, Joy J. Moore. Me, Christopher Fan Kaufman. Today we're talking about Luke 1, 5 through 13, and then we also add optionally 14 through 25 and 57 through 80. We'll talk a little bit about why it's cut up like that in just a moment. This is the podcast for the fourth Sunday of Advent, which this year happens to also be Christmas Eve. So as you're preparing for a busy day, our prayers and thoughts are with you. And we're going to talk a little bit about Luke chapter one. So first of all, do you want to just tell us why it is that our text is cut up a little bit like this? Are you going to ask me to do that? Oh, I can do it too. The big thing is just that as we look at the first couple chapters of Luke, we get two version or two main bodies of text. We have narrative, but then we also have these wonderful sets of songs. So these are things like the Magnificat, which is Mary's song. There is also the song of the angels in Luke 2, which we're going to talk about. And here in Luke 1, we've got the song of Zechariah. It's a prophecy. It's a song that he sings when he gets his voice back. We're going to talk about why he loses it. But the reason that our text is cut up this way is we don't want to miss that song. Because that song says so much about the way that Zechariah, first of all, how he learns in this in this episode, but also how he reacts to the birth of his son. I always appreciate the fact that, um, at least these days, um, that we pause to hear Zechariah's song. So often um, we, we pay attention to the songs of all of the women. And um, there are a lot of gifted songwriters um, and uh, spoken word artists and poets uh, who um, communicate powerful emotion um, through through song. And so I just I, I love it when when the the way that we read the Bible counters our cultural imagination. And uh, this particular reading allows us to do that. Um, it is an incredible narrative. Um, this um, setting in a particular time where we're introduced to uh, Zachariah, a priest, and um, we're introduced to his wife, Elizabeth. And it sounds like an Old Testament story. Yeah, it sounds it like, you know, something we've heard before. Older couple, she's barren. They have no children. That's not the way of God. And then God comes in um, and uh, we get in the New Testament here, Luke uh, reminds us of the Jewish practices, uh, the custom of the priesthood. Uh, and, um, and, uh, and then the word that is so often familiar. Um, what would you do if an angel started talking to you? I mean, fear is like exactly how I'm supposed to respond. This, this is so viscerally real. This is such, you know, how are you going to respond? He was terrified, you know, and yes, he was terrified. Fear overwhelms him. And the angels say what the angels, it's almost like the angels never know who they are. <laughs> it's like, hey, don't be afraid. Oh, come on, dude, I'm talking to an angel. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. And I love that this one, it's such a human story, too, in the midst of this revelation that he gets of the angel. Because Zechariah, he's flabbergasted because his prayer has been answered. That's what I love about this story, because it's so true. Yes. Sometimes we're we're mad or sometimes we're frustrated because our prayers don't get answered. But other times, our prayers do get answered, and we still don't know how to react. <laughs> and Zechariah you here. asked for this. <laughs> yeah. And so I love it because, again, this is just one of the things that's so special. And I think that speaks to so many people about the narratives at the beginning of Luke. And we're going to talk about this in the Christmas story as yes. well, is that these are stories of real people. And we can see in the ways, of, in their hopes, in their dreams, in the ways that they sometimes don't know how to react to what is happening in their lives. We see that this is the story of a God who meets us in our lives. This goes back to what we were saying at that very first episode when we started Advent. We're not talking pie in the sky here. 
we're talking on the ground in the middle of a messy life. What does it look like for God to show up? Yes. And that's what we see here in Luke 1. And when God shows up and God answers those prayers in an echo of what we saw when God told Sarah that, or when Sarah eavesdropped and found out that she was going to have a baby and she snickered. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all those years of waiting, how do you, how would you respond? Exactly. Well, here's Zachariah and Zachariah is like, you going to do what? <laughs> how, 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 do, how do I know? And so the response is, and I just, I just get this idea, you know, Zachariah is a priest. He's going to come back out and share the word of the Lord. Not today. He's not. Nope. He's coming, and he's not, he's not able to mm -hmm. say a word. And uh, he's not, he's going to be mute until uh, the things that were spoken of come to be. And so there will be no words from Zachariah um, until we get this song where he can express what, Oh, wow. I mean, I'm jumping ahead in the verse, but where he can express all that he has been experiencing for, well, lo, these nine months, yeah. because that's what it's going to be. But let's go back to the story. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think there's a couple things, too. I'm glad that you pointed out. This is another thing that Luke is very intent on helping us to see is the way in which these stories at the beginning of his gospel of John the Baptist, and then we'll later see of the birth of Jesus and then his early childhood are grounded in the Jewish rhythms of life. Yes. And especially here in terms of the rhythm of life around the temple. So mm -hmm. Zechariah mm -hmm. is a priest serving in the temple. And again, that we need to remember that just as going to church might be part of the rhythm of your, of your parishioners everyday life. And maybe it's not every week, but it's part of a rhythm, no matter how seldom. This is part of his rhythm too, that yes. these, same, these same patterns took place in that world. And here's the thing, and this is what I love about this text. Zechariah probably did this. We said he's an old man. Mm -hmm. He's probably done this over and over and over again. It's just his job. It's just part of what he does. And this time, something different happens. And so I, as you go through you are a working preacher and you are working hard because today is Christmas this is Christmas Eve and you've got two services. And it may feel like you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. But like Zechariah, this might be the day. You never know that this might be the day when your prayers are answered. And how will you react? <laughs> how will you react? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. And uh, as, as the story moves and, and John the Baptist is born, um, the testimony th that his birth has, uh, we read in 58, her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy to her and they rejoiced with her. I love the specificity of that because so often when God shows up, when God does something, we forget to give God praise. We will say, whoa, that happened. And then we forget to keep saying, whoa, God did this. Mm -hmm. And so if as you are on the lookout for this maybe being the day when God shows up and shows out, um, be sure to give God the praise. Be sure to name it as rejoicing in what God has done, because that indeed is what all of this season is about. It's about what God is doing to restore good and righteousness and justice to a broken and fallen world. Yeah, that's beautiful. And what I love about that too, and what I love about that verse, and I'm not criticizing this practice. It's a necessary practice. But when we do the prayers of the people in church, mm -hmm. so often they are only lament. They are only the things that we are worried about, the things mm -hmm. that we want fixed, the things that trouble us in this world. And there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that trouble us in this world and a lot mm -hmm. of things we need to pray for that way. Mm -hmm. I don't want to in any way say that that's not how it should be. But 
I hope that we also take time to celebrate, that you take time to rejoice in those prayers and to lift up those people among you that God's blessed, yes. that God has shown his mercy to and say, look, people of God, here is God working among us. And that that's something that we too in our services should lift up and celebrate, I think is really important. I always see that. I love that though. Her yeah. neighbors and relatives heard and they rejoiced with her. With her. Yes. And the, it's, um, it's an amazing thing because when you give God credit for what God has done, it encourages you to ask God to show up again, you know, and in that waiting period, I mean, for Zachariah, that was a long, silent waiting period. And in that waiting period, you need to be able to tell the story of the last time that God showed up and showed out. And you won't be able to do it is if, if you don't acknowledge along the way all the places where God has been faithful. And so that, that I really appreciate that. I, I have to admit, I served in a congregation where regularly when we would be doing the call for prayers, there were a couple of gentlemen who would get up and they would always give testimony. Sometimes it would be the testimony of what God did for them 15 years ago. And sometimes it would be the testimony of what God did for them 15 days ago. But they made sure that we knew that all those prayers that were being lifted up were being lifted up to a God who not only hears, but answers. Amen. All right. Do you want to talk a little bit about the song before we get done? Because we pointed it out and it's a beautiful song. It is a beautiful song. And again, it is, uh, I want to acknowledge as a Luke always does um, that um, a Zachariah's capacity um, was because he was filled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so his words became uh, a prophetic word. And they are drawing attention to the God of Israel because of what God is doing, because of what God has done. And it's faithful to what God has always promised to do. And you move through this. He talks about Abraham. He talks about David. He talks about the covenant. He talks about the prophets of old, but he turns around to talk about this tender mercy of God who breaks in upon us to give us light in the darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into a way of peace. What an incredible promise to hear, first of all, at the beginning of the story of the incarnation, because we know that in the chronology of the people of Israel, there were centuries of silence. And they are hearing this story after they have recognized all that Jesus has done, because Luke is writing in hindsight. But he wants them to recognize that what God has done is faithful to who God has always been. Yeah. And I think I love that you pointed out that he goes through these, these big moments in the Old Testament to mm -hmm. point out all these people who are so important to the history of the people of Israel, to David, to Abraham. Because one of the things, you know, we're in December, and so, as I'm sure many of you know, our Jewish brothers and sisters have just celebrated Hanukkah. And one of the things that we can really learn from them, this is in Hanukkah, this is in Passover, is that they are so good about reciting the past mighty deeds of God. And we so often are fixated on the present. Mm -hmm. What is God going to do right now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I love what you talked about with that testimony, because that's in some ways what a festival like Passover is. Mm -hmm. Is it a testimony of when God brought our ancestors out of Egypt. And because God did that, we know that God will do it for us. Amen. 